And we begin. It's been a little while. Welcome to a new year. It's been a while since we last did anything back about a month ago. This is Legends of the Drowned Isles, a homebrew D&D 5th Ed campaign, campaign two in this setting, my homebrew uh, this can the setting this campaign is called the Great Confusion. I am demonstrating it more adequately than I intended to. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One GM and uh, uh, world builder and general uh, cause of all the strife for all the characters, both PC and NPC. I am joined by my three players, starting on my left with Pat. My name is Pat, and I'm playing Silas Marsh. My name is Marie, and I am playing Elves. Not so, that's old. Um, wow. Annie. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's some, some old <laughs> muscle memory there. <laughs> and I'm next, and I'm playing Medrek, half orc cleric. All right. Uh, the shortest introductions ever, even with the diversion of <laughs> which which character am I now? <laughs> We, we were, were talking about Elzera's notes earlier, to be true. fair. <laughs> true. I did see that a little bit earlier as I in my never-ending quest to try to get my notes to be a little bit better than they are. Well, we return to the world of Omatia, this strange world composed of numerous islands separated by deep seas, surrounded itself by an ocean of sand. Someday maybe we'll delve into the sand. No one's really too closely at it, but maybe we will. For now, though, we are 1,000 years in the past of the previous campaign, where the world is in turmoil. It seemed as though the world had stepped out of a dream or perhaps was li still living through one. Confusion reigned across the land. Everyone experienced some missing time. The PCs have gone on to discover that what was missing was, in fact, a chunk of the Celestial. One of the gods, Poluxia, had been removed from the world. And that process seemed to produce a lot of disruption, here and in the other planes as well. Um, on this hunt for them, they've encountered a number of uh, figures who are trying to smooth things over or... It seems maybe that way. Uh, everything from a strange, uh, white-clad, older, brusque, uh, somewhat pompous uh, gentleman named Vassar to uh, a sphinx whom you worked for for some time. Uh, but along the way, numerous people have had some difficulty in this strange town of Aelthvater, which seems to be somehow at the center of a lot of terrible things. Everything from the first landing point of an ancient army reborn to uh, clashes with seaborne life to who knows what next. Ruled over by a baron and baroness who themselves seem somewhat connected to terrible goings on. As all of this progressed, uh, there was also what some have called an incursion. This is where portals seem to open up to different realms within the town of Aelthwater, spewing forth terrible creatures for the most part. And the, one of the most recent ones, and there hasn't been any since this, about a month and a half ago, there were large demonic-like creatures who burst through and seemed to be searching for things. Those things that they could get their hands on, they took back through the portal. One of those things, whether it was searched for or not, but was taken back, was Melora Cartwright, a friend of the PCs, sometimes a dancing date of Medric, uh, kind of imposed herself a little bit willfully <laughs> on Medric's life, uh, but who nonetheless was taken through a portal. Now, in uh, his quest to find a way to manifest his goddess on this world, Silas has done a lot of research onto portals. And in fact, with a colleague named Dudek, and well as some help from an ancient and thought completely lost uh, group of portal walkers, if you will, uh, travelers through the multiple planes known as Argentis Sagex, you've now got the plans to build portals. Some things are... Uh, 
required to build these, including uh, the necessary crystals to pierce the veil or, or to break through the domes of crystal which separate realms. However, you've collected enough right now, and in some investigations found enough of uh, these, these crystal shards to create a portal to, well, what is referred to as the shadow, which is where it is believed that Melora has been taken. You spent a few weeks now researching these things, gathering the necessary elements together, and now stand on the precipice of actually pulling this off. In one of the abandoned warehouses where uh, one of the portals had come through, you recall that it seemed as though the portal appeared uh, several feet off the ground, sending some great colossal creature crashing into the, the, uh, the body of the warehouse itself. You found it uh, a sufficiently quiet enough place to set up your experiment. And with uh, Dudek's help, Silas has been busy setting all this up. So, uh, I believe that kind of gets us to the current point. Anyone like to add anything to where we're at? Okay. Mm -hmm. If you do have something to add, by all means, uh, jump in. I've left out plenty of details, but no need to go through everything again. But I wanted to get us, get myself as much as anyone else, uh, back up to speed. Uh, in terms of the new loot we acquired in the last few sessions, uh, so Medric has plate armor now, plus one magical gold, and his advantage on stealth checks. And the longsword, did Medric take that, or was it, was it taken by somebody else? I Ooh, think you're the only one that can use it. Okay. Yep. Medric has new stuff to play with. Okay. And I now recall, was there, uh, there might have been something I went to, to uh, stat out that I think I forgot about. Hmm. Um, was there, or maybe that was, maybe that's in a game I'm playing because, hey, too many things in one mind is a dangerous, dangerous thing. Because you'd hmm. found some other, um, oh no, you were doing, sorry, it was downtime last session, so we didn't do that. All right. Well, we can fast forward a little bit after a few days of trial and error and probably considerable amount of going back to the drawing board, combining Dudex, um, let's just say uh, uh, um, academic knowledge of building portals and what he knows of the Argenti Sagex, combined with the actual designs and plans that were added to your book of Argenti Sagex by uh, the last uh, member that you met, um, I will have uh, Silas with uh, an advantage, with Dudek help, Dudek's help, uh, roll me an Arcana check to see how well the experiment has worked. And along with this, um, while um, obviously Silas is the, the sort of the central character to this, I would love you guys to describe what the portal looks like. It can take a whole bunch of different forms, from the exotic to the mundane. And I'm curious to see what you guys would like it to look like. So we'll start with the Arcana check from Silas. With advantage, your DC technically is 15. Um, getting lower than the DC does not mean that it does not succeed. It means there's a quirk of some kind. Hey, um... So this is the Just actual for... role to make the portal to her, right? This is the portal to this is the portal to uh, the shadow. And just right. to note, how many? Just, just so I can log how what resources are like, how many of the stones are we using? So you have a bundle of stones from uh, that you had found. I don't have that number offhand. Yeah, I have five small shadow shards and one medium. I think in the, well, that'll be another quirk of the roll if it's lower. So we'll say it requires the, the, uh, the medium shard. And for every point below 15, we'll require another one of those small shards. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't hear you. This is the one we're making to Melora, right? To the shadow. You yep. can't make it specifically yeah. to her, but you can make it to the realm yes. she was in. I just wanted to make sure this wasn't a test or something, but this is the actual attempt. This is the actual attempt. So you've basically done a, a series of small tests. You see the arcane energy flowing around the runes that you've created, the, 
the structure and device you've created, the crystals are vibrating appropriately, now it's time to turn it on. The one caution that Dudek will say is, I, I, we can't keep this on constantly. It will burn out over time. So I'll stay here on this side to make sure that it's maintained. I sure. think that is a good idea because I have feelings that Dudek is easy to distract and we'll get stuck on the other side. It was hard <laughs> enough to get him back here in one piece last time. <laughs> Just promise me you'll take notes. I I, I will pull out because... I will pull up my notebook. <laughs> and because you know the, the portal can't be constantly left open, I'm assuming the three of you have gathered there with whatever resources you plan to take with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I have large formula to make the portal. Does that give me a bonus or is that just... That enables you. Make... Enables okay. you to make the, form, make the uh, roll. Okay. Does that let me make a large portal then i i just wonder what the difference is between if i only had small formula versus large formula uh oh that's a question i haven't thought about for a while and i'll have to see if i have my notes on that uh i don't have my notes in front of me oh, that's um, fine I, i'm i'm assuming that um part of it is that it uh, will stay open a little bit longer than a small portal will be. So a small portal is instantaneous. A large portal lasts for uh, approximately a minute. Um, it okay. also would be size, where a small portal would be a, would be a, a medium human, whereas a large por portal would allow three medium humans or perhaps even a cart to go through. Okay. Um, okay, well, then I'm going to spend the one small info I had on creating a portal to Melora to get a plus two bonus. Okay. And then Arcana. And maybe next, can you cast Guidance? Yep. Where'd the window go? Add a d4. 26. Awesome. I was worried. <laughs> This is what he's training to do. So, that's gone. It doesn't use anything anything more than the medium crystal. The other four oh. are still preserved. Right. Five. I do have one other thing. <laughs> uh, he'll use the medium crystal, and uh, the runes around it will be drawn in the uh, Barlgura blood that he had collected from the demons that came through. Oh, nice. To give him an increased uh, connection to their... So whatever that does, he had two vials of all Gura blood that he'll put into it. Okay. So let's talk about what it looks like. Anybody have any other thoughts about what it looks like? The portal? Bloody wounds on the ground. Um... And you can imagine this as sort of pseudo magical technology you saw some of what uh the how the agenti sagex built their machines the plans were as much theoretical as they were aesthetic so it was mostly you can do it this way and it can look this way but you don't have to make it look that way i think annie in making it is more looking at function like she's more worried about function and ease of building it Okay. And making it pretty. Yeah, make it efficient. <laughs> so is it an arch or a doorway or a box? I would say it's probably more of a doorway. That seems mm. easier to make than an arch. Yeah, with the construction that's going on at the village, Silas can grab an old door frame and door from there. <laughs> basically looking at the how can we make this as quick as and efficient and efficient as possible so that we can get to Melora quicker because yep. yeah and the fact that she's not responding to my sendings is uh, kind of unnerving exactly okay any other thoughts about the aesthetics of this what did you do to the the warehouse itself which was kind of a, a jumble of 
broken wood and boxes and, and barrels? Did you clean anything out or did you try to make it look more uh, undisturbed? Is, it, is there any other image around that? Just clean it back, make an open area. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also in Thieves Can't, right? Danger, do not enter. I, I know a lot, not this past downtime, but a few downtimes ago, I had gone around and studied the like thieves can't of the area and what people put on doorways and stuff. Okay. So danger, do not enter in thieves can't. Probably danger, do not enter. No, really, I mean it. This isn't just a way to hide my good stuff. <laughs> Well, well, I, I had studied, and I know that there they had placed notes above doors, like, don't, the, this person is guarded, or this this person is a safe haven, and stuff like that, so. Okay. Wizard is experimenting in here, proceeding <laughs> on risk. <laughs> nothing There's to do no with portals. here whatsoever. Yeah, nothing to see here, no portals, everything's fine. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, as the last of the alchemical and arcane symbols are attached to the crystals, almost uh, probably embedded somewhat slightly in the wood itself, as well as the, the writings both around the base of this wood and carved into the uh, sides, the blood, in fact, flows up through the channels of those carvings in the wood, glowing slightly in a weird sort of way, it's like an anti-glow, where instead of glowing brightly, it, it's like it glows with shadow a little bit, appropriately enough. It surrounds the doorway, and then on the edges of the doorway, you see first a, uh, a bright light, and then a sort of seeping, uh, flowing, almost fog that seems to creep up underneath it. Well, I think it's working. Good luck to all of you. Thanks. Try to get back as soon as possible. Yep. How do we open it from the other end? It should simply be there on the other side. This is a stable portal. It just won't be there all the time. I'll monitor the, the readings of the energy flux from these crystals and see if I can determine an ideal amount of time that it will be open. Um, and I'll leave the... Um the smaller shadow shards, is there a reason that we know that, that we would need them on the other side? Um, the only thing you know about the shards really is that they are useful in getting to a realm. You have no idea if they're useful within that realm at all. Okay. I'll leave four of the five shards with Dudek then. I should be able to study these further. It might help me to refine our wonderful device here. As much as I really would like to go with you, it's best that someone on this side monitors things. Yep. Uh, hey, Dudek, can you send telepathic messages by any chance? Like, I bet you'll want to find out if you know it's a spell sending. I am familiar with it. I use it to com communicate with colleagues, mostly. I hold up the uh, stylus's book and... Uh... I remember, you've got a book of your own. You can write messages to us. Yeah, if anything comes up on this side, contact us. And we can contact you through this. I'll try not to bore you with minute academic details or the <laughs> outcomes of gambling matches, but I certainly... Remember, a there's the word limit. <laughs> yes. And similarly, uh, let me know if there's anything I can do from this side. Yes. Uh, and Silas is going to go take one of the, uh, pull one of the small nails out of the door frame and take it with him. Okay. This hopefully will give us a connection to this side if we need it. Good idea. And remember, as you transition through the crystal sphere of this realm and the next, see if you can grab a few crystals on your way. They are elusive, but it may be possible. But now we know what we're looking for. True enough. And I've gotten quite good at it. <laughs> Fair enough. You can do that sort of thing? Cool. <laughs> How do you uh, think we got these ones? 
Silas has no idea. <laughs> it wasn't there. Well, these ones I think you gathered while you were here, as opposed to the ones traveling yeah. between the planes. But yeah. Um, all right. You open up the door. Yep. Yep. Beyond you see stone, gray, red, and black mostly. A little flecks of brown here and there, but not much else. Nothing that you would describe as bright or illuminated, but sort of shaded with vague light from a distance. It feels cold flowing through, and you can see that that dark fog kind of rolling in. Who's first? I am last. I'll go first. <laughs> okay, Medrick. You step through the door frame, and this weird moment happens. Your foot passes out of this world, but does not yet pass into the next. And there is that transition moment, that queasy feeling of falling and flying, of twisting and turning, of tumbling and standing still. Like being in the worst storm on the worst boat imaginable. That's the interim between those spaces. Do I see any crystals? You can make an attempt. All right, I will definitely will. Now, I don't have my rules on hand for that right now. Does anybody recall how we were doing that? Because I don't have it right here, weirdly enough. I think it was sleight of hand. So that's what I was, why I was doing the harvesting. I'm trying to think if I have a... I don't know, but Silas is going to be wearing his eyes of minute seeing. So he puts on or he goes through. <laughs> Right, if it's sleight of hand, I have a plus zero, so it's just a straight up roll. Two. I do not well, grab any crystals. The, the roll itself kind of demonstrates no matter what you're rolling for. Um, <laughs> and as you kind of just on the edge feel around to try to uh, catch one of the crystals, you feel your foot land on solid stone on the other side. Behind you, you see a door frame. Standing strangely in this space. Around the door frame, there seems to be a complicated symbol that's written. Much more complicated than was on the other side. It doesn't really look so much as it was written or carved, so much as it's emitted by the door frame itself. Uh, almost staining the ground beneath you. First thing around, you... Is it a, are we in a safe area here? In the you, Shadow World? You look around, and it appears to be a stone in all directions. Several openings, passages, ways, maybe in each direction. There is no immediate ceiling. The stone itself seems to, to uh, climb about 20 feet. And as you look far above, you see no sky, no sun. Just a distant cloud that every once in a while, you, but, but, uh, through it, you see more stone far overhead. A bright light sweeps across the horizon from time to time, leaving a small buzzing sound, but thankfully does not appear to be in your direction. It is stone in all, all uh, spaces here, aside from a small amount of blue crystal that seems to be manifested not far away. All right, is it the crystals we're looking for? No. They bear no resemblance to those same sort of crystals. These are mundane, at least in that respect, although they do glow slightly blue in this reddish light. You also see the body of a dwarf about five feet to your left. Who's next? After you, Silas. So what do you want me to roll... Well, if you're going to try to grab at these uh, these crystals, now that you are aware of them, it's mostly a matter of action. So something like a sleight of hand would be appropriate. If you've got something else you feel would be appropriate, I'm also open to that interpretation. Well, he's got the glasses on to hopefully help him see things at close up. Uh, if he sees a crystal, he's just going to try and grab it. Okay. Uh, 
I use sleight of hand because that's way better than my athletics. <laughs> I will give you advantage because of the, the eyes of minute seeing. Shoot, where did the... Oh, so it's a 15. Okay, I lost where roll 20 was. So with a 15, first off, uh, with the eyes of minute seeing, um, it's a little disorienting, and you're going to miss most of the actual uh, effect of being on the other side because it is literally like wearing uh, a microscope on your face, uh, which means that there are things that are very, very small filling your entirety of your vision. As you step through, you're actually able to perceive sides of the crystal spheres, the one that surrounds Omesha, uh, which is broken and jagged by the experience of what the portal is actually doing, piercing through it. And you can see the other side as well. And this this minute and yet massive dark gap that exists between the two of them. In that dark gap, you spot motion. You're not able to make it out. It's glinting ag against the, uh, uh, the, the shattered uh, spheres. But it does appear that something lives within that that gap between spaces. You reach out, and it is a very odd experience to, to reach forward and see your fingers as large as a person as you try to pluck a crystal from the edge. You do so. Now make a dexterity saving throw. Actually, sorry, constitution saving throw. Crystals are poisonous. Um, okay. Thanks. Six. Oh, so. I did not mean to attack. <laughs> <laughs> you take two points of piercing damage as you grip onto a, a small crystal of Omesha. It is one of the shattered pieces, which seems like they're in slow motion, turning and twisting. You grip onto it just as you stumble through the, the door. When you uh, swing your face around... You see Medric's eye as big as your face as you happen to look over to him as he sees you come through. Yeah. Uh, I step out of the way. I, I, I reach out with my staff and attempt to beat the monster. <laughs> <sighs> Weirdly, it's almost as though because of the, the angle and the sort of angle of his face and the, 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 the way these things work, it's as though his, his left eye, or actually his right eye, I suppose, at this point, is massive, but his other one's just normal-sized. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I take the glasses off. Okay. And as I described before, you see um, this sparse space. I'll say it's it's about um, about 40 feet across uh, in, in almost roughly squarish. There's large tunnels which seem to to move in a number of different directions, at least five that you can see. It feels cold okay. too. And in, cold in a way that's not just the absence of heat. It feels cold in the absence of warmth. In the absence of life. The absence of hope, even. Well, good thing I'm here because I bring the warmth. <laughs> and Every, everybody, everybody hug Medric. <laughs> uh, and did I get a crystal? You did. Okay. But like small or? Yeah, one small crystal. Okay. Of Omisha specifically. What color is it? Um, it kind of, well, in the light of, of the shadow, it kind of looks dull and red. In the moment you, you grabbed it, it looked like it had more color than that, but here it seems dull and red. Uh, the dwarf, that's the, the body of the dwarf. Is he, I'll, I'll inspect that. Is, is, it, is he dead or is he just sleeping? Well, you'll step over to that, but we will get to Annie because I'm assuming she's not going to take a lot of time. Okay. Um, nope. Um, I am going to, however, um, during my, my time, during the long rest, something that I would have gotten was, would be like a pocket watch. I'm going to look at the time before I before I leave. Okay. You know, before I go, go across. We'll say pocket watches exist. Sure. Or, or a watch of some type. It, it'd be pure we, mechanical. We know clocks work. Yeah, it'd be pure mechanical. Um, probably pretty expensive. So we're talking yeah, like... Yeah, I have a large money. Yeah. So with large money, it would be no problem. You wouldn't even have to break that. Um, yep, you've got a, a decent pocket watch. 
probably from one of the 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 fancier jewelers in there. This might even have, if you want it, it could have a little bit more of a a flair to it. I probably would. Okay. Um, I just re realized in my notes at the start of the session that I meant to do that last okay. time and never mentioned it because um, I knew that the time worked differently. Um, so I'll take take a look and note the time and uh, and then go through. Okay. And uh, try to grab a stone. For the others, as you've seen them go through, um, Silas wouldn't have noticed so much because he's wearing those those um, those goggles. <laughs> But it is a weird optical illusion of them kind of slowing down as they get to the threshold and then poof, they're on the other side. But there's a continuity to it. It's not as though they vanished from one spot and, and appeared in the other. Um, make a perception check as well. Okay. Because you're holding on to the, the watch. Okay. Just as you're stepping through and kind of seeing them on the other side, you notice that it is though when they arrived on the other side, they stopped moving. Okay. Um, now you reach out as well and try to snag one of the crystals. You two are successful. Um, you also will get a small crystal. You did not notice those creatures necessarily or whatever thing um, Silas had seen. But you do kind of notice that the, the multicolored, multifaceted nature of the crystal on the Omatia side, it has brilliant lights and seems to sparkle in the energy of Omatia behind it. In front of you, you notice the sort of rocky red of the crystal you're passing into. Now, I will give you a choice. You can choose to pick one from Omatia, which I assume people were doing, or you could choose to pick one from uh, the Shadow. But you do notice both sides as you're passing through. Uh, I will grab one from Omatia because I do already have a small one from the Shadow in my bucket. Okay. Almost immediately after stepping through the portal, the door closes behind you. There is a, a surge of arcanic energy around the doorframe. You also see, as Medric had noted, this symbol that seems to sprawl out on the floor in front of you. But as soon as you've crossed the threshold and that surge of power goes, that symbol on the ground is the only remnant of the door as it seems to fade away. Okay. And uh, uh, can, can I know what, what time slash date it was when we left? You can. Uh, just, just general time, time like afternoon. Uh, time of day is entirely up to you, uh, but the time, the date would have been probably the 13th of Axum, a Saturday. Well, say at 3 p.m. Sure. For, for science. Remember where we parked. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed, there does not seem to be a door behind you. Now, um, Dudek had said that he was not able to maintain the, the portal constantly. That would require a lot more power than you have access to. Uh, but he would reopen it. Did you have a schedule on which he was going to reopen it? And well, we said he was are. just going to look at the energies and whatnot. We'll send him a message. And we know that time worked differently in, in the other place. So, like, we thought it was two days and we were gone three weeks. So. All right. Medrick. Yep. While the door disappears behind you, you're staring down at this body. Looks like a dwarf. Um, dwarven ages are hard to really determine. They get buried behind their beards, but there doesn't seem to be a lot of silver or gray in the beard. Brownish. But then again, the, the wane red light of this area seems to turn everything fairly dull. You notice that the body is uh, racked with scars. Uh, 
two of them stand out in particular, a sort of circular gray scar that's on the left side of their head, kind of almost temple spaced. Uh, and then a, uh, a sort of rippling yellow scar that's on the neck on the right hand side. The clothes are in rags. Looks like, oh, we lost Silas for a second here. Hopefully he returns. Um, we, uh, yeah, the clothes are in rags. It looks as though there's multiple layers made up of different pieces of clothing. As though um, searched for and pieced together and um, assembled from whatever scraps could be found. Are you going to search the body, or are you going to go any closer? Yeah, I'll, go, I'll search the body. Okay. Uh, make a make an investigation roll. Yeah, reach. Investigation. I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, fucked. That's a bad roll. And hopefully, we have a return. Eight. Eight. Okay. Um, not sure if I want to hold off for a moment to wait for return but uh that message in in the group chat uh my computer just froze oh dear it's not mine <laughs> that was the one i was worried about but still hopefully uh he can return in a minute no not yours and once uh, silas comes back to the shadow uh i'd like to try to figure out how the dwarf died by doing a medicine check well we'll we'll actually catch you up we'll say that uh silas is still kind of a little disoriented, both from his travels through and the the eyes of minute seeing. Um, I don't know if any of you have, you know, stared through a pair of binoculars for too long and you pull them back and suddenly the world feels like it's way mm -hmm. too far away. Um, but as you're you're pawing through, um, you do find a, an old dagger. Um, it looks like it's been it's been uh, uh, sharpened a lot of times. The blade itself is is sharp but it's thin as though the metal is worn away. You also um, put your hand on what feels like a cloth bag um, just underneath the clothing. And as soon as your hand touches that bag, um, you get the sensation of, of cold and the flash of an image of a young dwarf looking bewildered down at a massive spear, which has been thrust through uh, his chest. And just kind of quickly, you look over and you can see that the clothing is open just enough. You can see a, a nasty scar on the chest as well. Okay. Uh, that's when the hand of the dwarf grasps firmly on yours. The eyes open wide. And he stares up at you. No, mine. You can't take them. No, mine. Oh, okay, calm down, calm down. I'm not going to take them. I just, I thought you were dead. And the, uh, the eyes are wide. The expression kind of um, angry and afraid at the same time. Little flecks of foam on the lips. Look very, very dry at this point. Oh, looks like we have... Uh, back again, just got to make sure I get everybody in the right spot. There we go. Welcome back. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Okay, cool. So Medrick went dwarf over. Dwarf is not dead. <laughs> Medrick went over to examine the body and discovered that the dwarf is not dead. As soon as he'd uh, gotten his hands on his, uh, on his bag of goodies. Uh, the dwarf seems to come back very befuddled. Very angry and very insistent. Uh, Medrick, I will have uh, you make a medicine roll. All right. Uh, Marie? I will try to calm him down. Okay. Like, like is medicine. where we're here to help? Is everything okay? Like, Okay. I'll say a persuasion check for that one. It's going to be fairly hard because he's clearly uh, of concern. 25. 25? Nine. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm getting shit rolls today. <laughs> okay. Um, As usual. He's gripped onto your hand, Medrick, mm -hmm. um, and his hand is cold, like very cold, but it slowly seems to warm up as he looks at you. He looks over at uh, Annie, and there's that sort of wild stare of, of disbelief 
and of confusion, but also rapt attention. You've, you've gathered his attention and he seems to be calming down. You're, you're new, new. What happened <laughs> yes. to you? New people here. <laughs> and he just starts laughing for a moment as he kind of backs away. He's still holding on to Medric's hand with a death grip uh, and kind of holding on. Uh, it was an unintentional pun, I suppose. Uh, and kind of keeping your hand away from the sack of goodies you'd, you'd spotted underneath his clothing as it kind and of uses check. you a bit to, uh, to stand up. What are you checking for? I come from a whole line of crazies. That's fair. Is okay. One of us? Is he, is, is he, is he one of your kind of crazy? Okay. <laughs> no, just, is this guy insane? Possibly cult insane. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, we'll see what the insight check brings. Uh, there we go. All right, ten. Um, there's definitely a tinge of madness to him. Um, but it does not appear to be... It does not appear to be a disconnection from reality, as you might expect. Um, instead, it seems to be almost an overperception of reality. What well, what happened to you, friend? He stands up, finally letting go of Medric's hand, uh, and he starts. At first, it looks like he starts to brush himself off, but then you realize he's really just checking to see if all of his if his hands are there, if he counts all of his fingers, he only counts to nine, but he doesn't seem to be disturbed about that. Um, and he looks up at you with wide eyes. I'll pass him the, the dagger back. Oh, <laughs> thieves. Good, 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 good. You'll do well. <laughs> of course you're thieves. Everyone here is a thief of one kind or another. <laughs> yeah, I, I just gave you back your stuff. Ah, honest thieves are the worst kind, but that's okay. I can live with that. I can live with so many things. I was asleep. Oh, no, 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 no. And you see him reach into the bag and you hear these jingling uh, kind of a dull jingling of coins. Nine, ten, eleven. All there. What? Is it here? And he starts looking around on the ground. I had one more. There should be one more. It should be here. I followed it here. Can you find it for me? What are you looking for? Sure. What, what is anyone looking? Oh, you're new. You don't know. I'm looking for coins, of course. And he reaches into his bag and with a very careful, uh, very strong grip, he pulls out this largest coin, about the size of a cookie, a good solid cookie. Um, and it seems, it's like Vanta Black. Have you ever seen Vanta Black? That's the blacker than black <laughs> kind of color where all light seems to disappear within it. It's like that. I can't use Vanta Vanta Black because that's copyrighted. So I got to use the other one, which I've forgotten the name of, the blacker than black open source, uh, deeper black than... Black 2.0. Yeah, Black 2.0, yeah. It's uh, something it, like that. I love I love that artist that, that made the, the knockoff of it. It's, it's <laughs> awesome. So he holds up uh, what looks like a, a cookie-sized thing. It's fairly thick. And he kind of holds it up and shows you, but he steps back a bit. Like these. If you see these, you take these. But you can't have mine. He puts it back quickly in his bag. I've lost one. They are mine. These ones are mine. All right, we're not staying here. Mostly long. mine. If we see one, they're all yours. <laughs> or it's all yours. I will hold you to that. You're an honest thief. You have to, you have to obey. I will hold you to that. It is a contract. He holds out his hand. Shake on it. Hmm. Uh, in exchange, uh, we need information. Have you seen... And I'll give him a description of Melora. She was traveling with a gravel creature. I will tell you all that I know. And he's holding out the hand still. I'll ask Silas and, and Annie... Uh, you can make that that deal for yourself. But do you think there's anything, any value to these coins in our world or no? 
value. Probably not. <laughs> You're new. It's delightful. I don't meet too many new people. Everyone's very old here. Even the young ones are very old here. Silas is going to turn on his detect magic. Okay. See if the coin is magical. He's put it away into his bag at this point, so it's not directly visible. Um, there's an ambiance of magic everywhere, um, almost as though the the place itself exists, but only exists for a purpose, if you will. It's not nothing here seems to be mundane, um, but the magic is very, very low and seems to shift. From him, um, you do sense uh, a bit of magic. The dagger is magical, despite its its, uh, its awful look. And there is a, the, the slightest tinge of magic that emits from the scars that you can see, as well as from the, um, the edge of the bag where he's put away the coins. The magic of the scars is contained, if you will. It's not omitting magic. It's it's more that it is, it is oh, yeah, a, a, a well through. Um, right about those coins, what do they do? Do you just use them as money, or? I will tell you much if you make the deal. Like I said, you can you can make a deal with him. Well, this deal seems seems fairly one sided. You are new here. You know nothing. I know much. I've been here for a long time. I can tell you things. Help you find things. You're looking for something. I can tell. Yes, because I just told you. But uh... All right, so if you can have my coins if I find any, but you can't have their coins, then I'll point to Annie and Silas. Fair. All right, I'll shake. And as the moment you shake his hand you feel this little jolt of electricity, um, like a static spark, but it, it lasts for a little long and kind of winds its way around your arm until it kind of sits in your shoulder. And after the hands are separated, still kind of sits in that shoulder. The coins, <laughs> they are the currency of this land. They are us and we are them. Uh, they are referred to as soul coins, but there is some debate as if it was your actual soul or just a manifestation of your soul or, or maybe, oh, I don't know much more than that of those, but you must hold on to your own. My soul, yeah, it's fairly, it's, it's, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My soul is contained in my body and in my mind. <laughs> Everybody thinks that until they wake up with a coin. Wake up. That's not even true either, really. No one sleeps here, ever, ever sleeps here. And how do they function? What What is here anyway? <laughs> you come from... The prime material plane, they called it. Yes? <laughs> we do. Beyond the prime material, there are beings which shed light on knowledge and existence. But on the other side of the prime material, there is nothing but shadow. All that is taken away. Some say that when you are nothing more than coins, then you return back to existence. But how how could I give up yet? There are some who've 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 gotten coins and they live. I would like to live again. Yeah, you don't necessarily need coins to live again. You won't know until you've lost one. Think of your fondest memory. The first time you had a sweet, or you fell in love, or you... you had fun with friends. 
and what if that memory fades? Because someone took Spe one of your coins. Speaking of friends, there was a new person here recently, and I'll give him the description again. Do you know anything about her or her friend? I know nothing of recently, but your friend sounds familiar. We need, we need to find her and bring her back. Bring her back. Same with her traveling companion, Graveler. Hmm. I think I know where they might be. Well, that's a start. There are those here who are stronger than others. Some, I think, come from here. I, I don't know. But they are twisted. They take your coins. If she was new here and did not know what this place was like, then she probably fell victim to them. Yes. Then can you take us to them? I know the ways. You would not make it through the maze. Not with all your coins. But with me. With me, we will. You will find your way. All your coins we intact. Don't. We don't have coins. We just got here. You can't see them. But they're there. Like a beacon. And you see him looking at you, and there's a sort of glint in his eyes. He's looking through you somehow. I can see them. Oh, that, that's just a glow of Ignis. Interesting. Medrick, are you able to contact Melora now that we're on the same plane? I could try. And sending is level two or level three, I forget. No, no wasn't stuff level three, okay. All right, Melora, we're here. Where are you? That's the message? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> that is the message. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like, we're here. <laughs> don't, don't have to worry about the word count in this case. Perfect. <laughs> um, you feel the message uh, leave you, and a few seconds later, there is a response. Medric, is that you? Where are you? She didn't I, answer my question. <laughs> okay. I am held. I cannot get free. That's the end of the message. She says she's being held and she can't get free. Where do they normally hold people here? There is a garrison not far from here. Ancient, old, worn. But they, they like it there. I can take you to them. All right. If your friend is there, then there's a place to start. Now, dude just warned us about people who would try to, to use us to take their coins. Can I do an insight check just to, like, try to see if he's, I don't know, working for, for them or associated with anything like that? Um, I mean, that gets kind of specific. Mm -hmm. Insight is really just sort of the reactions yeah. in the moment. Um, could be checking to see if it seems to be a setup. Yeah. That's, yeah. Those yeah. are the words that my brain was. It would be a very, very high DC to detect something that I guess specific, but, uh, yeah, you can make an inside check. Yeah, 14. 14. Um, I'm not expecting much. Basically. Yeah, I mean, he's very strange to begin with, and 
there is something of delight in meeting people who have apparently all their coins or brand new. Um, he seems absolutely sincere when he says he knows where they are, where the, the, the place is, and that they do take coins. Um, as you're watching him, uh, he seems to genuinely want to lead you all on, you know, to the right place. Um, he seems very sure-footed when he looks at the, the five different exits here and picks one in particular. We might want to mark things on the walls so we can find our way back. I know my way. All right. Silas pulls out some pieces of chalk and hands one to each of you. Um, I'll also ask dude for his name. What do they call you? <laughs> Few have called me by anything for a long time. My name is Rodolpo. <laughs> it feels strange to even say it. I feel like I should guard my name. It's on all of my Don't coins. Don't steal it. You will know it is my coin because it will have my name and my memories, I think. I don't remember. <laughs> I only see a gap where it once was. At some point, is it okay if I inspect your coins? He looks up at you. So how do you mean that? Essentially, this just, is the inverse of an of an insight check on you. I just want to know, like, because when I touched him, I, I got a flash of his memories of, like, him staring down at the, at the spear sticking out of his chest. Mm -hmm. And I figured, like, what if I can, like, hold on to one of the coins and get more memories? Have, like, have them flash into my mind. Okay. I think then you're not... Are you being genuine about that reason, or is that only in your mind? Well, if he asks for more detail, I'll I'll explain it. When I when I touched you, when I thought you were dead, there was a vision of of how you died. I'm assuming that flashed through my mind. So if I touch the other coins, then maybe they'll contain more of your memories or more of other people's memories. And besides, we signed we, we signed a contract, so they, these would count as found coins, which would automatically be yours. So I'm not going to steal them. No, and he kind of shies back, uh, kind of putting his hands almost uh, very protectively, but almost instinctually covering where the bag is. And it's kind of inside of his clothing, so you can't see it, obviously, or see it uh, apparently. My life is my own. What you saw... Well, I, I did not mean to share with you. It would be strange to share that closely with anyone. No one trusts anyone else. Once you have a hold of someone's coins, it is as though you cradle their heart in your hands. It's hard to trust anyone that closely. Maybe. You earn my trust. Maybe. But I would ask to touch one of your coins. I don't have any coins. You don't see them, but they're there. I could demonstrate, and he eagerly steps forward with one hand to, uh, out. Sure. I'll hesitantly put my hand up. And he looks surprised when you say sure. And he reaches and reaches past your hand into your chest and you feel his cold fingers delve deep below the surface of your skin. It's uncomfortable, not because it would be actually parting your skin, but as though someone is, you get a shiver like someone walking over your grave and he kind of pulls and you feel this, the sensation. So I to snap the guy away before he can pull anything out. Okay. He hits him with the staff. All right. Um, like in a pushing more of thing rather sure. than... Sure. Uh, make a... Um, make a... Um, let's say an athletics roll to kind of shove him back. 
He's not very strong, but. Oh, sorry. Nine am I. Uh, let's see. I accidentally hit the uh, staff thing, but there's a uh, 14 athletics. Okay. Well, let's see what he does for his. He manages to hold his hand there, but noticing your interruption, he looks over his shoulder at you where his, his hand is up, uh, and you get this glare from him, this sort of um, sense of of uh, of furious anger in that moment. Uh, he stops. Um what do you do? He's not moved further further I, in. No. But... Oh, that's yeah. probably not a good idea. Silas just looks over at Medrick and says, "I don't think you should let him take part of your attempt to take part of your soul." Oh, he's not taking it. He's just showing me the coin. But uh, the contract was for any coins we find, not the ones that we have. Will you let me proceed? And if he does, yes, if the coin stays it within runs. Me. I didn't quite catch okay. that, Pat. Sorry. Did we lose? Pat oh, again? I just said, and what if he takes the runs? But uh, what if he takes the coin and runs? That's what Medrick seems to be okay. So Medrick is it is his own body. He's autonomous person he can decide what to do with it <laughs> well, if he runs you you guys can stop him so does he continue or seeming to see that there isn't going to be opposition yeah. he presses further silas, forward silas steps back and what do i feel when he does that there's this sense of intrusion the sense of of something odd and then at one point his hand kind of jerks slightly ah there we are and he pulls back as he pulls back both um silas and annie notice the normal nimbus of of light and flame around medrick starts to dim and he pulls, and as his hand crests the, crests the surface of your body, you see he is indeed holding on to a coin. Unlike his coin, this one does seem to glow, almost as a, a silver or a, a white gold. Within you, Medric, you feel like something's missing. Tell me one of the formative memories that Medrick would have. It could be a formative uh, memory of him joining the church or him fighting in a battle or an intimate moment with a friend. Like during his like early teenage years, like training for a battle and like finally getting a win over somebody else who he normally didn't win against. Okay. Um, you become suddenly aware both of that memory and then of a gap where that memory was. Looking up at you, steady eyes holding on to this, um, Rodolfo starts to recite. Rodolfo, sorry. Starts to recite that memory to you. Um, including revealing things that, that Medrick might not normally reveal. Um, such as who the opponent, opponent was, why this meant so much to him, that sort of thing. And for Silas and Annie, as you're listening to this very dispassionate description, um, you get the impression not only that that moment in time was there, but all the connected elements of where Medrick was in his training, how frustrated he had been up to this point, how the opponent was one maybe that goaded him, how the trainers were pressuring him. All of these other things were included, and Medrick, you feel separated from that memory in that moment. You see, this hey. is only a small part of you. Can you put it back? I can. 
All right. As I'm pointed waiting. out, coin, the, the deal was for coins found. I'm sorry. This is... It's been a long time since I've touched a coin so pure. And there's a, there's a sort of strength that builds in him. His shoulders straighten. A calmness comes across his face. Some of the shuddering that he had before has gone. Oh. Thank you for that moment. No problem. Thanks for showing me what the coins mean. And with a practiced motion, you feel now like his body, where he'd been lurching a little bit before, now seems... Um, seems to have some grace as he pushes the coin back in and you feel that reconnection. And there's that moment of, uh, it's, it's like when you've, uh, you've been lying down on an arm and it's gone to sleep and it's dull and numb, but you don't realize that until suddenly the pins and needles kick in and there's that pain of reconnection, but there's also that warmth that flows into that part. It's like that when the coin is rejoined to you. And then he, Pushes it back in and then pats you on the on the chest. Keep care of those. Yours are strong, fresh, unhindered. Thanks. So the coins you have, were they all from you or did you acquire them from others? I'm not going to judge either way, but... Hmm. Sometimes I'm not sure. The ones in my pouch, mostly from others. Some of mine have been long gone. Some of them I wouldn't recognize if I'd had them back again. Your friend has not been here long, right? No. Uh, For a few weeks. And that's uh, weeks on the prime material plane. Hmm. Time has no meaning here. As Medrick points that out, I look at the, the watch. Seems to be proceeding along as normal. And you look back at the watch and it's the same time as when you looked at it last time. So while it moves while you're watching it, every time you look away, it seems to reset okay we should go your friend may have some hope yet good Pylos looks around the room to see if he can uh, if there's any magical glow from where the portal was the the stain that's across the floor has remained and there's some residual energy in that but the actual door frame has completely vanished yeah. and there's no trace of the magic itself yep and do i see any other magical auras that might perhaps be that coin he was looking for uh not in the immediate area no Like, as we follow him outside of the labyrinth, I'll keep an eye out for coins. Okay. Um, he does turn back to you. The way will be dangerous. There is nothing safe about this place. Keep your coins and your wits about you. Stay close. Understood. Can somebody roll me a d10, please? Nine. Okay. Rodolfo leads you through the winding, twisting pack as passages, and it feels as though it is unending. Um, every once in a while, you look back to where you've been, and the passage does not seem to resemble the passage you came through. It seems like it changes constantly. But Rodolfo seems to move forward with a confidence, a certainty. Every once in a while, stopping, looking around. As you travel 
there are also sounds. Sounds of whales at distance. Not the animal, but people crying. <clears throat> Actually, probably the animal as well in a certain sense. That's what we would refer, refer to the sounds anyway. Distant vibrations, distant... Um, almost like wobbling sounds. When you have a large piece of metal and you shake it, you hear that whoa, 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 every once in a while. Overhead, there seem to be large beams of light, twin beams that seem to move from what generally is to the right of you overhead to what generally is the left. Once or twice, he has you stop as those beams seem to come somewhere nearby. And in those brief instances when they're nearby, there's a burst of sound. At one point, it sounds like jungle birds. Another point, it sounds as though it is rushing water, always at a distance. Okay, I need to look Simon, something. Or Simon, Silas is leaving... Uh arrow marks leading back the way they came every 20 feet on the sides of the cave. Okay. I just need to look something up. I need a D100, please. Fifty-nine. Okay. Um... Everybody make a perception check. Visual counts, so if you have anything that gives you bonuses on visual, this will uh, be better. So 22 from Silas, 26 from Annie, just to show perception. off. Perception, I'm pretty sure I'm perceptive on this kid. Hey, to be fair, <laughs> none of us could see anything. No, that's true. Uh, <laughs> 15. <laughs> that's, those are all great rolls. That's pretty awesome. So I'll say a split second before... Um, before uh, Silas notes it. Um, one thing I will say is that the, the passageways here do not feel as though they are hewn out of stone. More that they are breaks in the stone itself, like the stone keeps separating and breaking and pushing, up, pushing together. They are craggy and they are, um, are at weird angles. Often they're relatively small um, to the point where you can keep pushing through, but you kind of have to turn a little bit sideways. Um, again, uh, Rodolfo seems to have no no hesitation. Um, but a glint catches um, first Annie's eye and then Silas's as you turn around one edge. And in this solid stone that is uh, on the, let's say, the right-hand side of the wall... Um, you see a metal curve sticking out of it. And it glints momentarily in that bright flash of light from overhead. The bright flash of light, the beams of light, by the way, are of the purest of white. Unlike the sort of general reddish glow, which is around here. Um, you can see that it looks like a circlet or maybe a necklace of some kind embedded in the stone but part of it is sticking out. There's something dangling from below. Do you take a closer look? I will. Okay. Yep. Um, the magical. Are you going to continue that up? Because that only lasts 10 minutes, so. Yeah, he'll just keep it going. Okay. It does appear to be magical. Um, not so much the, the circlet that, that's on it or the, the necklace, but the part dangling from the bottom. As you get closer, you notice that it looks like a small rabbit's foot. Uh, with an attached silver um, uh, silver cup, which has a small chain to the... I, it, it looks, again, like a circlet or a necklace. It's, it's mostly solid metal, but as you get closer, you realize it's bands of metal that are separated or connected, rather, by small bits of chain. It does look like it was made of silver. It's in good shape. Magic items tend to be non-destructible in many ways. Uh, and just kind of embedded in the loose stone around. Um, if you pull it out, do you take it out? I will try to carefully take it, take it out. Okay. 
it's about head height and you kind of pull at it. The stone around it, the, the ground seems to crumble and, and, uh, and, uh, dissipate and a bone falls out, um, probably a collarbone falls out, uh, from around it as you pull it out, but it is free and in your hands. What kind of magic? I'd say divination magic. So it looks, I should, I really have to find my colors of magic list somewhere. Schools of Magic with Colors. I actually have that list. Uh, it looks... Uh, it has a, a sort of silverish glow around it. Uh, please make either an arcana or a perception check. The answer will be different depending on which way you're looking closer. 13 arcana. 13 arcana? Okay. Uh does not seem to give you much more detail. Um, but it, it, it appears to be kind of flowing around the rest of the collar. So the energy emerges out of the uh, foot into the rest of the collar. Annie? Yeah? Could you bring out the rabbit's foot that we had? I want to see if it's the same kind of magic. I'll pull it out. Okay. Annie will also make a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Uh oh. Oh. Ten. Okay. Um, you're reaching into the bag and you've got this thing in your hand, so you just snap it around your neck to get it out of your hand so you can reach into your bag properly and search, and you pull out the other rabbit's foot. Um, Annie has just attached this around her neck. The magic of the rabbit's foot does seem to be similar magic. Has the magic item she just put on changed any that I can detect? Um, if it's just if it's a curse, then identify uh, then uh, detect magic isn't going to pick it up. I think if anything, it just looks like it's active now, where it was kind of mm. passive and waiting. Annie drops the. Um, the rabbit's foot on the on the ground. So well, why did I do I, that? I will pick it up. Okay. Do I feel anything? So the one you put on is that the one that was in the stone that you just pulled out, or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It does look sharp, and and the you can see now that the the collar itself is made of silver, shines a little bit in the light. Um, and you make a dexterity saving throw. I'm good at those. And Silas also make a dexterity saving throw. I am not good at those. Okay. Um, you both rolled pretty well. As Silas goes to pick up the rabbit's foot, Annie also reaches down to grab the rabbit's foot. And there's a moment where their heads are just about to collide, and she looks <laughs> over and went, oh, that's not right. Uh, and you manage to avoid colliding heads. But you're not sure why you even came close to them. Weird. Do I pick up on the awkwardness in this entire situation? Why yes. did I do that? Especially from Annie. Um, Annie's not normally careless, and she would have seen that he was reaching for the rabbit's foot, so why did she bother? Yeah. Usually weird. Grace is my thing. <laughs> Grace Annie, and uh, brains. Is everything okay? I'm confused. Silas is going to lean in and uh, look at the rabbit's foot that's dangling from the uh, the neck rings. Does it look like a good rabbit's foot or like a tattered <laughs> rabbit's foot? Possibly an upside down. Is it manicured? Is it uh, <laughs> rabbit's foot. Uh, does, it does it have nail polish? <laughs> is it? Is it? Uh, yeah. Is it friendly? Um. Did the rabbit take care of themselves? Did they have enough carrots? <laughs> uh, let's call that either an animal handling, uh, a survival, 
or in the worst case scenario, an investigation roll. Obviously, the difficulty will be easier if it's an animal handling one uh, or survival one. Well, animal handling and survival are both one, so 14. 14, okay. Um, you look closer at the rabbit's foot, comparing it to the other one that you've already got, which is in great condition. Um, and it, it strikes you somehow that it's inverted, that the rabbit's foot that's hang, the hanging around her neck right now is somehow backwards from the rabbit's foot that you're holding. Not just left, right, inverted. It feels as though that the foot was on backwards somehow on the rabbit, maybe? Uh, does this directional mounting appear that maybe it had changed or like this is a purposeful thing? I mean, I'm not sure you, how you would tell it if it's changed because you haven't seen its original, but... Um, well, nothing... if you look at a piece of jewelry and part of it is bent around backwards and doesn't look like it fits with how things originally were. Right. Um, if this looks like it was made this way. I think... Um... Uh, do you have any background in, in, or anything that would relate to sort of jewelry making or the manufacturing of these sorts of things? Uh, jewelry making? No. Curses? Yes. Okay. Curse expert is one of my things. Right. What does curse expert do for you? Normally it, it just gives me uh, advantage on concentration for the couple of curse spells that exist. Oh, okay. Um, let's I'll call pick up this... the other rabbit's foot that's on the floor, so, I, so we don't forget. Yeah, well, um, I picked that one up. Yeah, okay. Silas picked it up, no problem. Um, you see, uh, uh, Rodolfo turn around. What are you waiting for? We can't stay in one place for place for very long. This place, and he kind of looks around. Is not forgiving. Uh, um, we have problems. Have you have you seen this before? Like, and I'll point to the necklace. Yeah, yeah, very nice. No, but it, it seems to be affecting her. Did I get anything from it, though? You just asked if I had any expertise, right. and then we stopped. Let's say um, let's say an Arcana check for this one. Um, eight, actually, with advantage, because you have the Detect Magic up, and I'll say that I can detect some slight differences, potentially. I guess the 24. 24. <laughs> so, and then you had advantage. So the Rabbit's Foot is normally a symbol of good luck and would be used in constructing something which would provide good luck. An inverted rabbit's foot, however that was managed, is most likely some sort of curse. Okay. I'm not going to say anything yet, but, uh, yeah, we should get out of here. Right. Follow me. Silas will keep his hands on the, the good rabbit's foot just in case <laughs> I keep her throwing it away. Okay. Oh, you, you have Silas. I, I can just see him holding the good rabbit's foot in one one hand and my arm. <laughs> no, he's not touching you. He doesn't want to be cursed by it. <laughs> so, someone else roll me a d10, and Annie, please roll me a, a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage. There's a seven. Lucky seven. <laughs> seven. Okay. Twenty-two. So, as you're moving along and you see the, the twisting, winding pathways up ahead of you, um, Rodolfo goes around a corner, kind of on a steady pace, not really slowing down, but a little faster perhaps than others. And you're also a little bit distracted as uh, Annie, you are walking along. And just at the last minute, you jerk your arm away as you were just about to brush up against a very sharp outcrop of rock that would have uh, scraped along your arm. Um, it causes Silas, though, who is watching you like a hawk, to kind of watch you for a moment. And Medrick, you're, you kind of hear the, the uh, or probably see the sudden shift as well in front of you. So all of you are distracted for a moment as uh, Annie, for whatever reason, seems to have dodged the wall, which you're pretty sure was not leaping out at her, it was not, it was pretty obviously there, um, but for whatever reason, she dodged it. 
Um, and you look back and you don't see Rodolfo ahead of you. Did we lose him or did he lose us? You saw him go around the corner up ahead, but you do not see him now. I'll, I'll Annie, turn the corner. And you feel a little shaken up because you're pretty sure that that wall came out of nowhere. Did that wall move? Um, no. Since Rodolfo doesn't seem to be here, Silas will lean in and say, no, I think you've been cursed with bad luck. Oh, fun. Pleasant. Let's we have figure to that out later. To get that necklace off of you. Without anybody else touching it, because I don't remember putting it on. Mm. Are you coming or what? You hear Rodolfo's voice up ahead. Wait, we're dealing with a item situation. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, we're going to, I'm just going to continue yep. moving on. Oh, okay. can go ahead. Okay. And then you hear him say the same thing again. Are we going or what? Yep. Hey, are we're we going. going or what? And you realize that all three of the voices seem to come from three different directions. Yep. Well. We'll go in the corner where we saw him last, I guess. Well, let's split up. We'll go one each. At least no. one of us will get out of here. <laughs> You round the corner where you had last seen him, and it opens to a slightly larger space, about about 15 feet wide, about 8 or 9 feet um, at its longest. It's sort of ovoid in space, um, and you can see um, three pathways in front of you. The left-hand pathway goes about 5 feet and then turns left. You see Rodolfo standing there looking impatient. The middle-hand pathway goes straight for about 20 feet. And you see Rodolfo standing at the end of that 20 feet, impatient. And the right-hand pathway is it almost immediately goes left. And Rodolfo is standing right on the threshold, looking impatient. Well, say all three of them. There's three of you. Which one is the correct path? There's not three of us. There's three of you. Or sorry, not three of me. There's three of you. <laughs> This okay. Is like... Silas picks a small rock off the ground and tries to throw it at one of them. Okay. Make a ranged attack. Uh, with advantage, because they're not moving. Actually, no, he would move. <laughs> is the one he hit by a rock? The pebble is not going to hurt. I think it's just would be... Oh, wait, no, I have plus one dex. So yeah, just, just a dex. Plus one. Doesn't quite count as an improvised weapon because technically rocks are meant to be thrown. <laughs> 16? Add, uh, add one to that. Okay. Uh, uh, meets beats. Um, <laughs> so, uh, in fact, however, um, he reaches out as the stone is coming to him and just deflects it off to one side of the wall. What did you do that for? Okay, so that one's real. That one seems to be real, sure. Can we get going now? Say all three of them. So you, so you said there was one that was at the threshold. Is that the one Silas threw the rock at? Or the pebble at? I don't know. Which one did Silas throw the rock at? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's encouraging. All right, then what about the other two? Should we check to make sure they're real? Or... I'll throw a rock at one of the other ones. Okay, the one straight ahead or the one off to the left? Uh, to the left. Ow. Why are you scratching? <laughs> Cat problems. <laughs> uh, dexterity? Yep, just straight up dex, because unless you have a weapon proficiency for a throne, which actually you should, you have dart. Yeah. Which I think Silas might actually have as well. But... An 11? Yeah. Okay. Um, so no. unfortunately you gauge the distance kind of wrong. Um, and well, the first thing you do is you drop the rock before you throw it and you pick the rock yep. back up and you throw it and it sort of bounces off the side wall and it's like bounce, 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 bounce to land at his feet. Stop playing around. We have to get going. This place is dangerous. Says that one. 
Okay, which path, left, middle, or right? I'll ask him. And with all three of them, they each say their appropriate path. Not apparently hearing each other, though. Maybe they all lead to the same place. <laughs> um. So, middle? I don't know. Silas looks at all and says, come over here. We have to discuss something first. I don't like backtracking, say all three. Wastes time. Well, you're going to waste more time because we're not leaving till you do. Make a persuasion roll. Where'd my character sheet go? Uh, huh. I seem to have lost. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Silas has lost, been lost in the maze. Sorry. <laughs> Persuasion. Okay. Uh, all three of them sigh and come walking into the center. And in the center, there is one of them. What did you want to talk about? Perfect. Continue. <laughs> Continue what? There were three of you going um, at the end of each path, each saying that, that the one that they were in was the right one. Now, there are three of you. Maybe you just can't decide amongst you which way to go. Nope. There were, there were three of you. All three of us saw it. Yeah. Let's just go. There were two <laughs> additional illusions. Seem to be gone now. This place is dangerous. Be sure to keep close. And right. as he walks towards the other end, three of him walk into each of the tunnels, or one of them watching each of the tunnels, seemingly unaware well, of the other two. I'm just going to put my hand walk. on your shoulder, like no offense, but uh, so that we were sure. Like, so you're going to run and catch up to which one? The one that that just came out and walked in. So the one that walked out walked out to where you're standing in front of you turns yeah. and immediately becomes three people walking to the three tunnels. Okay. There is no separation, no no moment, no hesitation. It just simply becomes three people. Wait, come back. Not again. Yes, again. Okay, so I'll put my hand on your shoulder, and Annie's going to put her hand on my shoulder, and then Silas is going to put the his line. hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that way, we, that way, we're sure we're following the. He looks up at you kind of kind of a little distrustfully, but also all right. This is weird. Look, I I promise we we wouldn't be doing this if there was something that wasn't off. All right, fine. Follow me. Conga line. And as he moves forward, I'll have each of you make a Intelligence saving throw. Oh no. I'm good at this. Maybe. Okay. And Six. Tell, tell me the order in which you're traveling. Who's on who's on first? Who's on second? I'm usually uh, on the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was on first. Okay. I'm in the middle. Alright. As each of you move forward. You uh, are certain you see the person in front of you. And then you get into the hallway. Annie takes the left hallway. Medrick takes the right hallway. And Silas moves straight ahead. Silas, as you're moving along, you start to realize that the solidity of the person in front of you is not what it should be. That's not Medrick. The other two continue on. Silas turns around and immediately, immediately yells out, Okay, stop this bullshit. Silas immediately <laughs> turns around to the two of you and says, Did you hear something? No. No. 
I heard you just now. L let's keep up with the uh, red elbow before he gets more impatient. Yeah. And there's a moment when you kind of look back behind you and then you look forward and you're standing alone in that hallway. No, for fuck's sakes. I'll just keep walking forward because what else can I do? <laughs> that is Everybody out else back disappeared. I'm, I'm going back. Yeah, Silas uh, pulls out his book and writes a message to the both of them saying, turn back. It's another illusion. <laughs> I'll turn around. Um, do they hear that in their heads or do they have to go read that? I think they hear it in their heads, right? When you're writing the book. Yeah, it, okay. it, 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 it shows up in front of us as a page, I think is what we well, okay. Okay. It does. It does get written under the page of the book and lasts for a little while. But yeah, it's basically just the sending spell. So okay. it goes right to their heads. So yeah, probably the words start to uh, impatiently form themselves in front of your face. Go back. You're in the illusion. Sigh. <laughs> probably written in as well. Or at least there's a sort of, there's a, there's a, uh, probably a tilt to the pen, which indicates sigh. Um, and you do see, uh, standing in the middle in front of you, um, Silas, you do see a, a, an impatient uh, uh, Rodolfo. And I'm staying here, he says. You reconvene with the other two, and once more, you are now seeing now not just, uh, you know, three Rodolfos, but you're also seeing three Silas's, three Annie's, and three Medrick's now, now that you've passed through the center point of that of that opening. But okay. I will give you the benefit of the doubt that at this point, you've kind of figured out that, oh, well, I'm real, <laughs> and that seems to be real. So the left, I turned around and there was nobody. The Silas went through the center. Medrick went through the right. Yeah. I was saying, did Silas go through the center one, Mark? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then he's going to pull up the book again and write in saying, go through the center passage. <laughs> and indeed, there's no... There's no other illusions. Only that one appears in front of you, or no other, no other words. There's not three sets of the words going go left, go right, go center, but this in fact <laughs> diverts that because you're not trying to say it. Um, and you're able to continue on. Well, that was a unfun adventure. Let's that not do that again. Very bad. <laughs> I told you to keep behind me. Yeah, but we did. <laughs> Well, we clearly three not, of you. not close enough. Be very careful. This place We're is meant to... holding on to you. <laughs> well, not really. Apparently. Uh, well, hopefully there's no more illusion alleys. Can I have another D10, please? My rope is on the horse. Uh, let's see if we get something. <laughs> <laughs> my rope is on my other horse. Uh, Six. A six. Okay. As you're moving along, um, the branches become more frequent. Um, and they feel like they're probably, let's see, probably... Medrick and Silas would be a little closer to this notion, but there's a sense almost as you're moving along that they are almost like ax cuts in wood. The way these are formed is that they are, um, as though a great ax from above was, was cracking at the ground from time to time. Um, and it's, it feels like, um, more deliberate than random. They don't follow a pattern that you're necessarily able to perceive just yet, but they are not entirely um, at random. Sitting atop the wall along one side of one, Annie, you're probably the first to notice this. Um, make a dexterity saving throw. Ooh. 
Okay. At least I'm good at dexterity saving throws, guys. You take one <laughs> point of bludgeoning damage as when you look up, you stub your toe on a very heavy rock. And you see a small, smartly dressed man, probably a gnome, wearing a brilliant green coat. Looks like it's almost felt. It looks almost like it's glowing. It's beautiful. Uh, it has a, a round green bowler hat. He's sitting there jauntily, legs are crossed, um, kind of just looking down. And as he sees you look up, he just sort of gives a little wave. Um, I go, hi, and kind of continue following Rodolfo. Okay, so you're going to ignore the him and move on and not let anybody else know? That's up to you. You're in the oh, back. Nobody else? Nobody else seems to so, notice. Does he seem in distress at all? No, he's smiling, in fact. I'll wave and continue going. Nobody else saw him? Nobody else noticed. Damn. <laughs> Um, as you turn the corner, you hear, um, just like Silas is going to use, a, uh, one of his warlock slots to cast hex on Rodolf, uh, Rodolfo. Okay. So I can track him. Cause that's the other thing that his curse expert does is lets him sense the direction to his hex target. Okay. <laughs> and at level five, it lasts for 24 hours. Curious question about how long it lasts here, but uh, we'll see. Yep. Um, okay, so you kind of uh, cast the hex. It's not uh, resisted. He'll hex strength. Uh, Rodolfo kind of looks around because the, the effect is fairly obvious and then looks kind of angry at you. What did you do? I just put something on you that will let me track you even if there's an illusion. That's, that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> Be careful with your magic. It goes quickly and comes back slowly here. Uh oh. Good to know. Hmm. I don't. I feel strange, though. What are the effects of the hex? He has disadvantage on strength checks. Okay. Not saves or anything, just checks. All right. Um. Yep, he he he. Oh, will help him open my doors. Extra damage. Yeah, he's he's feeling kind of weird, and and you can see his his uh, shoulders sag a little bit, uh, and uh, uh, he has to stretch a bit more to keep moving on. Um, Annie, as you turn the corner, you just hear in the faintest, uh, almost like a, on the breeze, um, the sound of a lilting whistle, like a pipe being played. Okay. And for the players, because the players have actually been in this place before, that was a chance encounter with Finn the Whistler before he was captured by, um, by uh, uh, Emeril. But that's okay. Yeah. You might see him again. I hope so. <laughs> and one more D10, please. Eight. Eight. I'm getting different ones every time. All right. All right. Not far now. You want to be careful. They've got ears like, well, like something that has really big ears. They are really big, too. Like rabbits? Sure. If rabbits were ten feet tall and tended to want to eat you. Oh, that's a terrible rabbit. Giant carnivorous rabbits. Well, now that I have that image in my head. And you can never unsee it. <laughs> there's a glow up ahead um, as the twin beams converge to a spot just around the corner. Um... Rodolfo cautions you for a second. Where the beams hit, strange things happen. But that's the quickest way through. <laughs> it's the only way through as far as I know. Just be on the watch for things. 
Make a dexterity saving throw, Annie. And make a dexterity saving throw, Silas. Okay. Um, Annie ends up walking into the back of Silas, who does not fall Sorry. over when he suddenly stops based on Rodolfo's <laughs> uh, request. Um, Rodolfo kind of looks back at the two of you kind of stumbling along. Now's not the time to fall apart. You've only been here for a while. I think it's only been a while. Silas motions for Annie to walk in front of him. He's trying to keep an eye on her. All right. As you round the corner, and now you can see this sort of space, the ground in, in this um, kind of newly carved out space. It, it probably was a, about a 15 foot, almost a round uh, opening, but you can see there's been carves now added in depth along, let's say, the, the left-hand wall um, where... Um, which is the opposite direction to where Rodolfo wants to take you. The ground is carpeted in green as grass thick and full of vines and large flowers of multiple colors spring up in this space. A waterfall, or sorry, not a waterfall, a pool of water sits in the middle of this, this room, this area. And from somewhere, you're not exactly sure where, uh, light seems to glint off the surface of the water. Rodolfo looks at it somewhat skeptically, squints his eyes, and starts walking around it. I don't know what that is. These are sometimes helpful reminders of worlds we've been to, but... Do I need to take a closer look? I'll just follow Rodolfo's lead. Okay. In, uh... How come you're walking so far away from it? Is it dangerous? I don't know what it is. Um, things I don't know are probably dangerous. Although it looks so very green. And he does kind of pause and is just sort of lost in looking at this lush environment which has sprung up right here. It seems, it seems like, like it doesn't belong here. It might be a trap. There's a pool of water? Yeah, there's a pool of water in the middle of this space that seems to be glinting with light. Silas pulls out a vial and is going to try and take a sample. Okay. Careful, Silas. Mm-hmm. He will move slowly and cautiously. Okay. The grass seems lush and thick. The hard rock beneath replaced by dirt, it would feel like, under your feet. There's even... Butterflies and other small insects moving between the flowers. Although you can see yeah, already... Is... Sorry? This is unnatural. <laughs> it's not stopping the... from getting the sample, though. Unnatural. Next time you guys go to a garden, I'm going to be just describing it the same way. It's going to be hilarious. <laughs> um, make an arcana roll as you move closer. Um, you can feel the vitality of the, the grass and the... the uh, area around. You can see the scars where two new uh, hallways or openings have opened. You can see 25. the f far end. Okay. You can see the far end of those, um, although they were, they're green and lush for the moment. You can already see them starting to gray and become brittle and even fall away. Um, the only way you could, the only way you kind of put this all together in some way, in, 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 in words is it as though a, a swath of another place has been put here. Like it was brought here. Like it was summoned here. Um, and as you move closer to the water, perhaps the most strangest thing of all is when you look into the water and look at the reflection, you see blue sky and fluffy clouds and sunlight. Birds flying overhead, a canopy of trees, Nothing of which is actually here, but the reflection of it is. You dip the vial into the water, and you have a vial of it. And then Silas will quickly head back, 
because he doesn't want to get caught and get, if that place slips back to where it came from. Like, yeah, this is uh, this is totally unnatural. We shouldn't go near it. I think it's another place brought here, and who knows what will happen when it snaps back. Good to know. And as you move off to the side and kind of step off of the grassy area, you see it rapidly being consumed by the, if you will, negative energy of this place, drained of its vitality, um, crumbling into dust, drained of all color. You see a butterfly flying along and then just sort of stop midair and then float on an invisible breeze as its wings collapse mid-flight and fall off the stem of the body. The pool dries, leaving nothing behind except the scarred landscape and the hard stone. Well then, you got out of the, you got out of there just in time. Yeah. I don't think that was it going away though. I think that was it being consumed by this dimension. We don't want to stay here any longer than necessary. Yeah, I agree. We're double staring at it, and it's pretty easy to see there's a, a little crystalline spot as a tear runs around his down his cheek. Um, and he seems mesmerized by the spot where this had been. Lost in memory, maybe. Lost in thought, hope, who knows. Was that a place you remembered? No. Looks like Probably a place I wish I'd remembered. Here. Sorry? Probably not safe to stay here, Rodolfo. No. No, yeah, can be. probably not. And with some reluctance, he turns. We're not far now. And he... Basically, Annie is kind of... She's already cursed. She's now like, nope, we're, I'm not stopping for anything. We're, we're going. Make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Speaking I was of. wondering if that was coming. Well. Okay. Womp. Take three points of piercing damage. As Ow. you're as you're swiftly turning away from this, and immediately your hand juts out slightly and gets caught on some of the shale on the side, leaving a nasty little scar on the hand. Should have made it a okay? cat. I should have. <laughs> you seem more clumsy your, than usual. You were climbed by a cat. Also, the owls were in character at first, but then became not. Um, as you're moving along now, you notice a couple of things. The silent mm -hmm. laughter of the cat's uh, adventure here is, is, is killing me. Um, you notice that there are scrapes along the walls. Uh, and in fact, when Annie, you cut your hand, you realize that the, the shale has been, has been um, dug a little bit. Whereas everywhere else, it seems like it had just been broken apart and spread apart. At least it had kind of been worn down by time. And this one seems like it was almost freshly carved or freshly scraped. The passageway starts to widen out and you can see on both sides that that scraping also seems to have gone away ahead of you you see two wide uh, uh, hills of stone on either side and a wide pathway probably uh, let me check here probably almost 50, 60 feet wide. It looks like the remnants of a road. There aren't any wagon tracks or even footprints, but uh, because the ground seems like all the dust has been worn away millennia ago, centuries ago, days ago, it's hard to tell. Um, up ahead, a fortress. Uh, maybe it was a fortress at one point, or a fort, or a castle? I don't really know. That's where they hold up. All right. And uh, do these people or beings attack others on site? Or... 
can 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 we rescue my friends without without a fight basically is what i'm wondering they don't often negotiate from what i've seen they mostly and you start to hear the heavy sounds of footfalls from down the area um and you can see about yeah i should probably just do the math here at some point but uh oh i have a measurement thing let me do that uh measure line Uh, probably a couple of hundred feet ahead of you. It, this whole thing it has a slight downward grade. And you can see um, an enormous figure, probably 12 feet tall, giant-sized. Um, but with an oddly, while humanoid, an oddly incorrect shape or outline. You can't see much detail from here. But it is though the head is not quite at the right spot. The shoulder is not quite at the right angle. One arm seems longer than the other. Um, kind so of it's kind of like a Dr. Uh, Marigold's servant. Not entirely kind of. dislike that, yes. But it's hard to see detail from this distance. Uh, what's that? That's them. That's only one. That is only one. There's at least two or three, depending on whether they're out on patrol looking for people to convince to come back with them. They collect people for their boss. Sometimes they shake a few coins loose in the meantime. So should we hide? Uh, yes. And he just kind of moves off to one side. Uh, I will also hide. What I'm going to do is actually bring up a map and see if I can drag everybody onto the map. While you do that, I'm just going to close the blinds and turn off, turn on the other light. Because it is getting dark in here. What comes next is inappropriate. Um, and I forgot to put Rodolfo on this map. Pardon me as I go fetch Rodolfo. He ended up not needing the other map. Now, while you can probably see into things, I don't know if I've set up the shadow properly here just yet. Please, as uh, as players, respect that there's some illusion here. <laughs> Madrick looks like he needs some uh, hit points. Yes, I have not reset the hit points. Uh, you sh should have control of your own characters. Um, there we go. Um, on the other hand, uh, Annie is removed, lost a few hit points here and there as she stumbled into things and cut her hand and so forth. I have taken more damage from the walls than I did in our last combat. <laughs> Fun fact. Challenge accepted. <laughs> um, but yes, presumably you move off to one side or the other to try to hide. And you can make stealth rolls. And he makes a stealth roll at disadvantage. Um, are you at advantage for that roll, um, Silas, or just always nope. rolling advantage? Okay. That's the way you set it up. Oh, that's fine. Okay. 18. 18. And for Medric... Mm -hmm. Disadvantage tends to not mean a lot for stealth when you have a plus 11. <laughs> that's true. What am I rolling? Stealth? Yes. I think that's a big zero. It sure is. But it's not a disadvantage because my, my armor and my plate armor is magical. That's right. 16. 16, okay. So No clanking at all. For most of you... Um, you can move yourselves to where you would have gone to hide. There's basically two large walls of stone. Um, Rodolfo went off to the left-hand side of the stone. Um, as you kind of think, we should probably hide. You see that Silas is still standing in the middle of the road, kind of crouching a little bit. Silas! 
And I'll just like put my cloak over my face. Because <laughs> I'm hiding. Status yeah. is trying to keep an eye on Annie. Yeah, let's see if yeah. Uh let's see. Uh they are all the same, so I will do one of those. And at that distance. It's just straight up roll. Um, as you see the figure at the far away side, kind of look up in your direction. Shouts out something. Do any of you speak giant? Nope. Yeah. That depends. Does, does a tall enough work count as a giant? So <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I do not. Um, there's a, a, a character in another yeah. game that I'm playing who has the ability to grow to giant size. I think at the moment he can grow to be about 18 feet tall. So there, there, you, if you have the ambition to grow that tall, then you potentially could, but not in this case. But this character must love door um, frames. It, uh, it calls out uh, something in giant, and then there's a response from the other side, from somewhere inside. Sorry, I can't actually see much of anything on my screen, but I do have 90 feet of dark vision. Okay. That's something we can see. Yeah, let me just set that up. You should have... Yeah, it only has 20 feet of night vision tree right now, so... Let's see if that makes it better for you. Um, you can just barely make it out way down, so if you have the map up large, you can see... About a hundred, yeah. almost two hundred feet away. In this yeah, dim I can't light. see it uh, from where I am. So yeah, we just hear it. Um, okay. That doesn't sound good. Um, for, I think Annie has the highest passive perception now, right? Because you just got boosted. Yeah. So Annie, you can tell that the figure has moved away from the edge. They look at us. I, I also have no dark vision. True. Okay. Well, they're in there. That's where they keep people. So should we just knock? Hmm. They didn't really come with a plan in case she was being held. They don't... They don't tend to talk much. What do they do with people? Hold them. There's a more powerful one that will sometimes buy people they find. They're after your coins or your service. Are they all giants in there? Well, the ones that are walking around are. The people they've captured could be anything. Sometimes they capture each other, but not very often. But it's all giants in charge. Yeah. Who does the... Who buys the people? I don't Is know there... their name, but there's sort of a hierarchy. I honestly don't know if they came with this place or came to this place. But they seem to get away with whatever they want. It's best to stay out of their way, but if you're looking for someone, that's probably a good place to start. Okay. Is there any other way in except for that door? This is as close as I've ever come. No windows that we can see into? From this distance, you really can't see much of anything other than the sort of hulking uh, stone walls. What do people, uh, I asked Rodolfo, what do people in this area wear? What's Rodolfo wearing? Tattered rags, I guess. Yeah, it, Rodolfo looks like he's wearing not just tattered rags, but the, the tattered rags of multiple different outfits that have been kind of cobbled together. If you... You kind of come with whatever you had, I guess. I don't really remember the 
that they're coming here, but things wear out over time. You find someone else's rags to wear. There are some people who make some things. It costs you coins, though. Sometimes you can get it for service. Why? Mm. Why are you worried about what they're wearing? Well, I'm wondering if perhaps we could go in in disguise. Yeah, I mean, I'm not taking this armor off. I just got it. <laughs> well, no, I can. It wouldn't be you two, but I can change what I look like. Right. And if I could be what they're expecting, then you guys could be my enforcers or something. Maybe we could try to go in and buy her and then just fight our way out or something since we don't actually have any money for here. I mean, that's an option. Yeah. So we could pretend to sell Silas. <laughs> no, that would be me... Uh, you pretending to buy Silas. Earth. Yeah. Like, uh, Silas will change it so that he looks like a foot taller. He's got, like, reddish glowing eyes. He's wearing robes, but the robes are tattered. Uh, like, dark brown to black uh, on the robes. Um, Rodolfo steps back a few feet when he sees this change. Who are you? You're not him. Oh, I would yeah, know if you were him. him. Yeah, he's still Silas. He just changes but, shapes sometimes. Who is this? It's not you quite see... right, but you look like someone I saw once. Where did you see him? It was a long time ago. Somewhere else. Is he someone of power? Someone to be afraid of? Yes. Well, what parts of this look am I getting wrong? How do I appear more like him? Perhaps we can use this. Um, it tends to be a bit... I think he's taller, thinner. Yeah. Uh, that I can't do. Actually, sorry, about six foot six is as high as I can go. A uh, voice like cold wind reaches inside and rattles your bones. Hmm. Does he have servants, like lieutenants or something? I probably can't pull it off to be him, but I maybe could pretend to be someone associated to him. Yes. Those he, he controls people. Sometimes without them even knowing it, I think. I, I've seen one once. I think I knew that they were controlled, but... It's a dangerous place to be without someone on your side. How about this? Uh, size will change it so he's got like purple horns growing out past the, the hood of the robe. Maybe make his eyes a little more yellow. I could pretend to be a demon. Um, no offense, but I've seen a lot of demons. They're one of the major things you see around here. You don't look like a demon. Although maybe a little bit more like the Dream Taker now. Dream Taker? I shouldn't have said his name. It said that he can hear you. Would wings help? And I've got like big bat-like demon wings. Uh... I mean, it depends on what you mean by help. Uh, Does it make me look like someone that they might want to deal with if I'm, I tell them I'm here to buy someone? I mean, I really don't know. But you don't look like you just stepped through a door. 
And you can see him getting more and more nervous as this illusion gets more and more gruesome. Even though he technically knows that it's you inside, it's definitely affecting him. Hmm. Okay, he'll change it to look a little more decrepit. Okay. Um, anyone got any other ideas? Not quite. I was thinking about one. Do you have any ways I'm of teleporting? I'm an expert at breaking out of places that I know. I mean, I can... We'd have to know the layout of the inside. I can teleport up to 90 feet away with one other person. Uh, that's kind of the extent of my... Uh, I think it's 90. Hmm. So what if we go in, pretend to sell Silas, and hopefully oh, they'll fine. put him in the same area as Melora. And then Silas and Melora can teleport away 90 feet. And then we all run. Yeah. That has a lot of splitting people up and yeah. a lot of chance of what if he's not put with Melora. That would be the main worry is what if they stick me somewhere else. Um... Uh-oh. How smart are these giants? Uh-oh. Something flashed on the screen. Yeah, sorry, my whole thing just froze for a second, but looks like we're still going. Okay. For the record, um, I love computers. I hate computers. <laughs> so, looking at Rodolfo, uh, Silas will change back to his regular self. Um, this, uh, when they buy someone, they buy them using coins. Like I the mean, soul coins. The coins are the most precious of all. Sometimes it's favors. Sometimes it's, I don't know, things that people find. Well, we could just go in honestly. I mean, just say like, hey, we're here to rescue Melora. We'll do you a favor, and then we'll all get out of your hair. Uh, Silas will pull out a small bag and uh, pull out a, uh, a ruby. Would gemstones be of use here? Oh. Uh, yeah, I know sometimes. This land seems to be very decayed, but... I mean, gemstones are tougher than most things I know of. They are mined here. They're not as common, maybe, as they were back home. But they are precious. Where was home, if I may ask? Ah... Uh, I don't even remember the names anymore. It was a beautiful island once. I was there when it was struck down. Crushed. One Athlon? of the gods. No. No, that's just a myth. Okay. The name of the place is gone, I think. One of the gods didn't like it and started bombarding it from sky we once had powerful magics too and that's unfortunate let me know if you remember the name though or if you remember which god did it not that we can do anything about it but well I think I think our best bet is if we just Try to buy her with. Yeah, go in and try to look as tough and badass as we can, and uh, offer to buy her with with the uh, rubies. I've got a few of them here. That works. And if we announce, if we present ourselves as potential customers, then the odds of them attacking us on site will be lower. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to make myself look like something scarier. Okay. Um, what's the scariest thing around here, Rodolfo? I mean, other than the the big guy you were talking about. Aside from the dream taker, um, there are a lot of large demons, some of them with four hands, flaming heads, Ooh. large tusks. And you remember that some of the things that invaded through the holes, um, you actually fought off. Um, things that looked like uh, somewhat what he's describing. Um, mm. And I think you did actually learn that they were called Barlguras. Yeah. Um, how tall were they, though? They are large creatures, um, which I think yeah. is getting into the... Uh, oh, only about eight feet tall. Biggest Silas can do is six foot six. Um, there are other servants. Um, it's one that has a body covered in chains. Um, just a little taller than you are now. And, uh, honestly, I try to stay away from them more than anything else. That's how I've kept on most of my coins. Except that one I lost. Silas will change into like a gray skinned humanoid with chains wrapped around him. Uh, and ask Rodolfo basically, like, what else do I need to look like one of them? And just basically try to get Rodolfo to, uh, to guide him in, uh, what what needs to look like for one of these chained demons? All right, um, it will come down to. I'm gonna say it's an insight roll from him. That's basically how the quality of this is gonna be, because you can change the illusion as you need to. So that's not that's not mm -hmm. the issue. Um, we got a sixteen. Uh, he guides you through several modifications that uh, tend to make everything look more and more sinister, more and more threatening. Um, can mm -hmm. you do only, is it just your, I forget exactly which illusion spell this is. Uh, this is uh, Disguise Self. Oh, Disguise Self. So it's pretty minor. Yeah, so get, You can get up to one foot taller, one foot shorter. Okay. He has to have two legs, two arms, a head and a torso. Um, so, other than that, yeah. Um, going to look that up real quick. Um, um, yeah, he, he directs you kind of to a bit more muscular um, with these chains all around the body. He does suggest if you can make the chains fly, that would go a lot more. They tend to feel like they have a mind of their own. Um the head's covered in chains as well, almost like it's a a, a hood. Yeah, I don't think I can make them fly out, but he can make them move around himself. So he'll have the chains moving and looping. All right. That is far too close for my comfort. Are you really just going to try to talk to them? We don't Nothing really have better. much other options other than uh, us getting caught. Mm. That's probably not going to work either. Might as well get caught trying to talk. Yeah, it'll give us the only chance at a peaceful resolution. Ooh, there we go. Well, best of luck. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, talking works more often than not, usually. So let's see if we can do this without devolving into a huge fight. <clears throat> I 
and uh, yeah, he'll head towards the, uh, I guess, further on down the tunnel or valley. Okay. Yes. Yeah, what Annie is going to do is she's going to pull her hood up and follow up behind Silas, kind of like head down, like I'm walking behind as a servant. Okay. What's Medrick doing? I'll I'll just walk behind Silas. In his as a, kind bright, of like bright and shiny armor with the uh, nimbus of fire and light. Yeah, I'm gonna sort of like have the air of a hired goon. All right. Um. Let us uh, uh, acting like a servant is how she has always been able to get out of, of the castle. She's good at this. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say a performance check from all of you. Uh, I will give Annie. Uh, that's a good reasonable deduction, so I will give you uh, advantage on this. And we'll see. Plus one to performance. That's better than plus zero. What this looks like. Okay. Funny. Sixteen. Dang. Uh oh. I literally rolled a one unless I have advantage. Uh, I'll but say you have advantage because of the the uh, the the image that you've created. Okay. So then I get a twenty-five. All right. <laughs> also, we're helping by by making it look like we're his servants. We're making it look more important. Okay. So yeah. what we Rodolfo have here is Rodolfo, is Rodolfo coming with us? Or no? Rodolfo is staying put. All right. <laughs> uh, because this looks way too dangerous, and he told you he'd bring you here. He didn't say he was going to fight with you. Or right, whatever you're going to do. We'll be back shortly. Um, so here we have one of those classic movie moments. Of we have the the trio walking down the road. It's not as much light as usual. Uh, we have this this weird chain being out front. We have the sort of servant, uh, sort of probably striding, uh, not confidently but determinedly, if you will, and determined to keep up. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, Medric kind of, he's got a, this, he probably has this scowl on his face where it's like, yeah, I'm a badass yeah. <laughs> uh, mercenary being of light. Ignis is I'm blessed sorry. to go with you, but I'm mean and nasty and so forth right now. So it's, a, it's, 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 got, it's effective, uh, but not quite as in character perhaps as the other two are. Um, we have the slow motion stride towards uh, the area. And I will say that uh, you move in a little bit further and actually um, uh, Rodolfo will kind of keep relatively close. He wants to see what's going on. Um, he wants to see how much of a shit show this becomes. Maybe, <laughs> yeah. And he wants to make sure I give him all my coins uh, that I find. <laughs> well, you know, uh, there are coins to be found perhaps. You see as you move along, and there's just a little bit of, of additional light. Every once in a while, there's the flash from those twin beams overhead and uh, occasional other um, uh, almost explosions or something off in the, in the distance, which give that reddish glow. You can see perched atop. So this, this does look like it was a former fort, a uh, very familiar style to what you would see in, uh, in Amatia. It's strange to see it here a bit, but it also looks like it's ancient run down. The walls do not extend as far as they once did, but they still extend a fair amount. There's still probably 12 to 15 foot walls atop a stone, which itself is another 15 to 20 feet. So it's fairly high up. And as you see, when you get to about there, you see the silhouette of that same creature standing on top of one of the walls and kind of observing the walkway. Um, and since you are kind of striding in, there's not really a stealth in this particular case, uh, and they're always they're already on the watch for you. Um, now with the silhouette there, you do get this deformed kind of body shape, where the head itself seems to be somewhat deformed. Uh, in this particular one, you also see that there's sort of hair sprouting in different uh, rough beads or rough uh, uh, braids, I should say, on the back of the head. Uh, one shoulder definitely seems to be larger than the other, uh, and there's a large club. Uh, looks fairly primitive, but very. Uh, the, the club is probably about as tall as you are, um, standing up above, above the thing uh, on top of this. Looks like an interior wall they've climbed up on. They kind of grunt back to someone behind them as well, um, in giant once more. Uh, but they don't seem to, to make a particular uh, motion in your direction. 
Um, the three of you proceed on, whoops, continuing around. And once again, Rodolfo kind of keeping a very low character um, there. You see now there's another one of them um, standing right at the edge with its club as well. This one looks like the club is jagged, like there were larger stones pushed into it, kind of holding it there, you know, tapping the club in the hand every once in a while, ready, but not taking action just yet. Um, you continue walking around? Yeah, Silas yeah. is going to head right up to the front gate or opening or whatever it is they have there. We're okay. walking in the front door. <laughs> when you, As you come around, you can see there's a wide opening um, right behind where this one is standing. There's a grunt from a sound inside, and that one actually stands aside to let you pass inward. And you can see there's a ramp upward. From there, you can see that one standing on top of the stone. Uh, one who looks better dressed, if you will, um, kind of standing a little bit further away. You can see a third, well, fourth technically, kind of over on one side. And as you ascend these steps, um, and we'll switch the order here so it's proper, you can see that there is a cage over on one side in which you can just make out a small figure who seems to be looking through the bars at what's happening. There is a fire there. There are other interior walls. Again, most of this looks collapsed. Um, and you kind of get the impression that this person, the more dressed, fancier dressed one, um, well, actually, all three of you can make an insight check. Now that you can kind of see them. Insight. I think. Fourteen. Plus nine. I'm I'm looking at the ground. Make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, for Annie, make a dexterity saving throw. And twenty six. Wow. Okay. It's my first good roll of the day. <laughs> Total. Nice. Take two points of uh, bludgeoning damage as you're looking down and fail to notice the edge of the doorway. Which does spoil the effect a little bit of the, you know, confident march in <laughs> and kind of catching up. You don't fall, though, because you're May that May I good. make a performance check to try to muffle the... Sure. The... You can make it... <laughs> if you do it well enough, maybe it turns into a front roll, and you just kind of look, da-da, but, you know. It, it's more to, like, do I do I make a sound or not? Yep. Okay. Yep. You, you managed to, to clench your teeth. I, I work with it. I roll work with, with it. Work with it. All right. <laughs> uh, so for the insight checks, I think... Uh, uh, Medric was by far the, the best. And so you're kind of looking, and you're used to sizing up people. Um, you've even faced on the battlefield probably some, some giants in your time. And these are definitely giant kin, but they all seem to be distorted somehow. They all seem to be to be um, grossly misshapen. Um, mm -hmm. It's like they, they, you know, if you randomly decided to increase the size of half of their bones by about a third to a half, that's what they mostly look like. Most of them also, and this probably strikes Silas a little bit from the distorted vision he had earlier of Medric's face, all of them seem to have one much larger eye than the other. And that eye is discolored and yellow and has, hard to see from this distance, but you would note if you ever saw them closer, that the pupil looks more like a goat's pupil than it does a humanoid pupil, although the other one seems normal. And sitting on kind of stones, as that one is, um, Medric, the impression you get while they're looking like they're trying to look like they're bored or uninterested, 
there is a quirk of one of the misshapen lips up to the side. And the smaller of the two eyes gives a, a, a an amused twitch. Again, trying to hold it, but couldn't. As you realize, that's the... That's the impression. This person is in power here, knows they're in power here, is not threatened in the slightest by your presence being here, despite the effort that Silas made into trying to look like something dangerous, um, and is sort of just biding their time, as in more curious than afraid. For you, Silas... You might have expected more of a reaction if these things are indeed emissaries, the thing you've tried to, to emulate. Um, maybe it's not as powerful as uh, Rodolfo said, or, or, or maybe this thing is more dangerous than Rodolfo said. Um, you're distracted momentarily as well by hearing in the back uh, a woman's voice. Um, Hello? Is there someone there? It is not a familiar voice, however. Okay. Um, shoot, so I was just looking for something. Uh, okay, what I do have that. Um, Silas will walk up and uh, at first he'll be saying it in abyssal say, where are the slave sellers? And if none of them reacts to Abyssal, he'll say it in common. I need to check. Because that was not a language I expected. Uh... Yeah, sadly, I don't have Infernal, so I can't actually do a demon language. I think back to you in... Uh, let me check here. They might actually, might actually be better at that. Uh, come on, you. Oh, there it is. Okay, it will be broken common because he does not have full common, but he has familiarity. Um, the one in the center um, speaks back to you. You speak as demons do, but poorly. Actually, it's probably he does speak a bit better because he's a bit smarter than the rest. This tongue might suit you more. Have you come to be sold? I have, co I have come to buy. What have you? He'll uh, hold up uh, one of the rubies in his palm. The um, I have more. The leader kind of looks beyond you and kind of starts eyeing Medric. That one. Not for sale. The other? We're here to buy, not sell. You're here to bargain. Yes. What do you wish to buy? I need to see them. See if there's one I am interested in. Seems to consider that for a second. You see a look pass between the three of them that are there. Um, a bit of questioning look from the one that's standing on the wall. The other one standing with kind of arms crossed, the one off to the, the west. Um, doesn't seem to like this at all, but they, you don't know if they ever have a happy expression, given the way their face is distorted. Um, the, 
gestures over to the sort of eastern cage. Look. So gesturing over to this cage over here. Whoops, I'm pointing on the wrong screen. What? Silas will walk over and take a look. Okay. I'll follow Silas. You feel the eyes of this one on top of the the seal uh, on top of the uh, wall, kind of following you and, and looking and watching, tensing a little bit. The chains on the on Silas's left side will be a little more agitated, as though they want to attack something. Okay. Um. You see, oh, what's her name? A, a dwarven woman on the inside. Um, does not appear to be chained up, but is kind of um, sitting lackadaisically. Who are you then? Looks like it's uh, actually it's a gnome. Sorry, even smaller. Red hair Who though. Are you? What can you do? I have magics. If I'm allowed to use them. I still have most of my coins, too. Interesting. Small. You have a human? Why would you want a human? Do not need small ones. Size matters? It can. What else do you have? Is this the only one? Another behind. No humans. I will trade two for this, this one, though. One? Sorry, what was that? Where's the other one? Um, he gestures to the back and points at Medric. I will trade two for this one, though. Show me this other one. Perhaps we can talk. And he just gestures over his shoulder to behind if you can see it there or not. And in that one is... I can see it now that he's moved. I can't see the things that he's on your um, I can move you kind of a little closer, but you can see the... Looks like a uh, female dwarf. Um, braided brown hair. Um, quite uh, stalwartly built. Uh, is actually in the process of doing push-ups at the moment is it the pits then better than being around here then you say something about a human I'm better than any one of those better than two better than him gestures towards Medric I'll just raise an eyebrow <laughs> That just looks over and says, there's a height requirement. <laughs> Suit yourself. To to reach the top shelf. <laughs> Smaller is better. Besides, it cut him down to size. You hear between um, the three of them, there's some muttering coming first from the, the large one off to the west. And then a quick response from the one it's in the center. I take it in not a language which we know. In giant again. Hmm. It sounds like a, a, a rolling of rocks. Uh, Silas will bring out his book. Okay. Sorry? Uh, just the giant sounds like a rolling of rocks. Like you said, there was a 
rocks? No, the voice of the giant sounds like rolling rocks. Um, Silas brings out his book and writes a message to the other two. Yeah. Uh, Silas writes a message in his book. You're Is breaking up pretty badly. Cutting up on, okay. Uh, to the other two. You're breaking up. The last sentence that I heard was write a message to the other. Okay. Um, uh, I can't hear. <laughs> I don't slave behind. Okay. We'll type. And it's like a real oh. message in a group chat. <laughs> uh, do I have the group chat? Here we are. Oh, I, th I think he has it. He's typing in the. Oh, money. okay. It says Pat okay. is typing. <laughs> it's like we're trying to translate from giant to demonic to common. Okay. So he writes to the other two, leaving slaves behind. Bad. Do we rescue them? It would mean fight. It would mean a fight. Uh, my response will, will be that Rudolph said that it can take a, a long time to heal, to regain magics. Yeah, we could always come back after we find Melora. The one in the center calls out loudly, just a loud shout in giant. It echoes across the walls. There's an answer. A quieter voice, but in, you would imagine broken giant, you're hearing enough of it to understand when someone's being fluent and someone is not. They are not. The answer seems to come from outside the castle shouted, bellowed at the top of their voice to be heard. It does sound like Rodolfo. Hmm. Then there's a sound which is universally understood as all three of them start to laugh sinisterly. There's a sound of rolling rocks outside as the as walls essentially start to erupt out of the ground. And I'll see if I can grab that construct and put it on the right level. Yeah, I think we've made essentially two large areas now are are blocked off as walls erupt out of the ground. And you can just make out from where you are that the one who's standing on the stairs is holding out hands and sort of directing the walls to cut off escape. And uh, we're kind of at the end of time. But as you might suspect... Um, They've put up with your ruse for a while, curious as to what it was. But we're more interested in you than perhaps you were interested in them. Trade of a sort. Yep. Sweat. <laughs> Sweat for coins. There was a, like, 90% chance that this was going to happen. <laughs> there, yeah. I mean, there was always a chance you might bluff your way through. But you weren't really offering... voice. Did he like snitch on us or what? No, uh, he, he was working with them the entire time. Who knows? Oh, okay. Who knows? There was a question and an answer. Who knows what the question was and what the answer was. But we'll have to find out in a future time. Off in the future where things happen. 
Um, but very amusing up to this point. I was very curious as to where you were going with the, can I make him look, can I make myself look scary? And <laughs> indeed, um, the only problem was that the leader seems to have not so much a fear for those particular kind of things, despite the fact that Rodolfo definitely has. Um, so it is going to be a bit of an extended break as I have some travel coming up, unfortunately. Uh, it was a bit of an extended break to get into this point, but we are now determined to move through and continue with the rescue of Melora. Looking for her in all sorts of places. Um, for my player's benefit, I will say that you are not on the wrong track. Um, it's just that you may not have found the information you need just yet. Uh, and there are other things to be discovered. Until then, however, uh, I want to thank my players for putting up with my extended break and my next extended break. <laughs> uh, we'll try not to have too many of those in this 2024, but there, there you go. That's the, how the year is off to a start as it is. Well, the first one is convenient because I'm, I'll, I'll be traveling that weekend anyway. Well, there we go. So, so we'll work it out. Um, for those of you who have been watching along, uh, live at home, thank you very much for joining us. If you're not aware of that, you can watch these episodes on the myriad Saturdays, which we don't announce roughly every two weeks. Uh, on twitch.tv slash ENCIF1, or you can catch up to all the episodes that have come so far, including Campaign 1, which didn't technically finish. Um, it's a COVID, vic uh, COVID victim, uh, unfortunately, where uh, all of us suddenly were working at home and uh, we couldn't continue the game for a while until things had to change. Uh, but all of it is up there, and you can find uh, 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 Finn the Whistler, uh, as they originally met uh, the Finn the Whistler, they is that also the guy that w was in the underground tower. It was the one who was guarding the underground tower and okay. was bound yep. by Imrol, uh, which is where the entire area around him was surrounded by green as he was helping to regrow and such. Uh, okay. And then you guys set him free. You were able to to uh, essentially okay. rescue him. But this is before he got caught. Um, and the Dream Taker, uh, who actually the characters have met before, um, and we'll see what happens if they meet him again. Our characters or the, um, these characters? Or not these characters? characters. The other characters right. actually met the Dream Taker. We're, we're smart enough not to continue meeting the Dream Character, Dream Taker, because he was dangerous and is dangerous. May or may not be involved because there's all kinds of layers going here. But uh, so you can find all that in Campaign 1, which I forget how many episodes, but I think we've surpassed Campaign 1 in a number of episodes now. We're up to 74 in this one. Ep Episodes-wise, we have surpassed. Yeah, not hours-wise. because Length, wise, length we of some... actually yeah. campaign still still haven't reached there. Yeah, yeah. That one ran for five years, I think. Four, four, four years. Five years, yeah. So we're getting close. We're getting close. And we're having fun. And who knows? They might still well, pick well, up eventually. 2016 to 2020, so four. Four years. Yeah, okay. Well, we're right on the cusp then. We will we will yep. pass that this year. And maybe we'll have the super session where we'll be able to have everybody back. Uh, we'll see. Until then, however, thank you very much for playing. Uh, oh, you can go to youtube.com slash ENCAF1. Look for... The, uh, the Legends of the Down Drowned Isles, L-O-T-D-I, Campaign 2, or whatever else I've called it there. But thanks once again to my players. And we will Thanks for running. Convene again in a couple of weeks. <laughs>